Good afternoon, my lovelies, and welcome to um, today's episode of um, our introduction to Urban Homesteading Channel um, or series. And we today we are discussing companion planting. So today I want to talk to you about what companion planting is, um, why we do it, and the benefits of it, and some really good methods of companion planting because when you're urban homesteading the chances are that you have very limited space for growing so um, you want to make as much you want to get as much bang for your buck as you possibly can with the space that you have yeah hi urban hillbilly suburban hillbilly how are you doing darling it's good to see you Angels Homesteads, welcome in. Hello, this topic is one I totally need. No worries at all, darling. I hope that we can help you. Okay, so first off, what is companion planting? Now, companion planting. Oh, Tony, that's fine, darling. Take it easy and look after yourself, please, because I know you're not feeling well today. Oh, Suburban Hillbilly, I'm sorry to hear that you're struggling today, but just you got this, okay? And we got you, okay? So it's all good. Right, so companion planting, what is it? Companion planting is an organic method of maintaining a natural balance in your garden by growing plants together that are mutually beneficial. Planted together, certain plant combinations can aid pollination, prevent disease, and keep pest numbers down. All very important jobs okay so it's really really but it is very important to know what you're planting with what because if you plant the wrong things together you can actually stunt the growth or kill the plants that you've already got in there and you don't want to be doing that okay we don't want to be doing that at all okay so um there are some plant combinations that have to be avoided completely, absolutely completely avoided at all costs, okay, because they really do not do well together. And one of the most famous is tomatoes and alliums. So your alliums are your garlic, your onions, your spring onions, anything that is onion or garlic related, okay? Leeks, don't put them anywhere near your tomatoes. The reason for that is this. Tomatoes like an acidic soil. Onions do not. So you're going to stunt the growth of one or both of the plants. Alleopathy is real black walnut trees and sunflowers are big culprits. Yes, they are. They absolutely are. And we'll get onto that topic in a little bit. Okay, so, but yeah, they, they are two of the most famous ones. You do not want to put alliums with your tomatoes. Okay. Now, what I would suggest that you do do is get yourself a couple of really good books. All right. Now, the one that I have bought most recently, I actually have about 30 books on companion planting. <laughs> but the one we're going to have a little look at today, and no, I'm not sponsored and I'm not affiliated with this person or anything like that, is this one. Oops, sorry. There's a lot of sun happening today. It's called Carrots Love Tomatoes, Secrets of Companion Planting for Successful Gardening, and it's by Lu Louise Riot. Okay, so um, I, I've had a really, really good read of this over the last week or so since I got it, and there's some really, really good advice in here. It is um, mostly American. Well, it is American. She's American, and so some of the words and usage and such like that are slightly different to what we would use here in the UK or you would use in Europe or in Australia. So as long as you know the differences between the language, you're pretty okay. You're pretty okay. Some of the plants we won't get over here because they won't grow over here, um, but some of them you can get and that's not a problem. All right. So however... I want to discuss this, carrots love tomatoes. Now, carrots do love tomatoes, all right? They absolutely adore them. But if you are having a bed 
that you want to make the most of and you want to have three to five different things in there, then I would not plant carrots with tomatoes and I'll tell you for why. The reason being that every other companion plant that tomatoes like, carrots do not. And every other companion plant that carrots like, tomatoes don't. So, and one of the most famous being is alliums, is your onions and your garlics and leeks and stuff like that. So you don't want to be putting carrots in with your tomatoes unless you're doing container growing. Okay, so container growing is your little tubs and your pots and things like that. So if you've got no other room for anything else to go with your tomatoes, then you can put a row of carrots in there or a ring of carrots, depending on what sort of shape your container is. But you don't want to put too many because you don't want to stunt the roots of the tomatoes either. Okay, so you want to make sure that you, you only put a few in there, depending on what you've got. What do you do we grow that you can't? Okay, well, that you <laughs> I could be here for ages discussing this. <laughs> um, one of the main ones is things like okra. We don't generally use over here. Um, and when we do get it, it's incredibly expensive. It, it's it's so, you know, unless I have seeds, which Funnily enough, someone who's sitting in chat at the moment actually sent me a packet of okra seeds. So I'm going to be growing a few of those this year just to check them out, see what they're like um, and seeing how that goes. But, you know, different countries have different fruit and vegetables that they grow and different herbs. Um, and as a personal opinion, don't take this as gospel. But there's certain things that I wouldn't use, you know. And when it comes down to herbs and things, trying to grow things that are a little bit more native to the country that you're in tends to um, tends to be you tend to have a better crop or you know, better result if you, if you grow something that's more native to the country that you're living in, yeah? Hi, Katie, how are you? Katie from Templin Acres is here. It's good to see you. Um, another one is wormwood, okay? So wormwood is heavily mentioned in this book. Now, wormwood in this country is not technically allowed Um because of its hallucinogenic um, properties, um, because it's the main ingredient in absinthe, and absinthe that is sold in this country does not have wormwood in it. Okay, so um, wormwood does grow native here um, in some places, but it's not something that we would use on a regular basis or look at planting unless... We're looking at creating our own absinthe and then we might get in a bit of trouble for that. So that that would be one that you guys can grow that we kind of don't even think of. Um, okra is a ripoff in the grocery store, $3.95 for a small package and it's days old. My okra, okra goes straight from the garden to the jar or freezer. Been saving seeds for so long it's free. Exactly. Hi, Mel and Flowers. How are you, darling? It's lovely to see you. It's great to see you. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so, I mean, like, okra for here is not something that would typically be used because, um, yeah, it's just not a typical native vegetable that people are used to having over here. So when we get it, it's far too long. It's about three to four inches long. It's, it's not nice to use it's got far too much of the mucilage going on and um it tends to be a little bit chewy if that makes sense so um i want to grow some to see if i prefer it fresh grown myself at the size that it needs to be typically um so yeah that that that's what i'm growing it for but we, we will just see i mean it may be a thing it may not be a thing but you know, um, 
someone very, very kindly sent me a recipe for pickled okra, so I will be trying that. Um, yeah, which I tend to go to things that are pickled or fermented before I go to anything that's fresh. <laughs> I can. I'm a pickle fiend. Anywho, so companion planting, let's get back on topic. So companion planting, very, very important um for your garden so there are many different ways to do this you can pick your own plants to put together and companion plant compared depends on what you want to grow and what your family will eat or what you will eat or um a member of your family will eat that nobody else will eat that you'd prefer to grow rather than go and buy i tend to try and pick things that are a little bit more expensive to buy to grow so i tend not to grow things like potatoes um, so I have to think of other things. All right. So I have my bed plans here. Okay. And I will go through them a little bit, but I will be putting a video out on the last day of the month that explains this much, much more in detail. So, um, okra is native to Africa. It was brought to America by slaves and the correct pronoun pronunciation is okri 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 i probably butchered that i'm sorry it's made fun of as of as a southern accent but the africans actually pronounce it okri okay cool i didn't know that i had no idea i had absolutely no idea see one thing that you guys can grow over there is taro we can't grow that here because we're far too wet um, well, we can, but it has to start off in containers inside and it's better off in containers in the greenhouse and stuff like that than put in the ground, which I will be getting to. <laughs> so when, when you're looking at companion planting, you want to have your main crop, your main crop in the bed. OK, so then you want to work around that crop to figure out what it is that you want to put in the bed with it, what will help it, what will help um, the soil health, what will help the pest control, what will confuse those pests to, you know, so that they won't come near what you are already planting so that they won't eat them. Um, another one is to increase bring in pollinators you know you want to bring in more pollinators to your main crop which may not be able to bring in as many pollinators as you might like so if you're like me and you live in a fairly wet area you or that has a lot of dull weather because we are very overcast a lot of the year um, here where I live in York because there's a lot of we live in a valley so there's going to be a lot of cloud so um you know having other pollinators in with things like pumpkins is going to be real pumpkin or squash is really beneficial because the pollinators will be able to find the pumpkin and squash flowers easier with something else that is going to draw them in hi diva in the day it's lovely to meet you thank you so much for being here i'm very pleased to have you in my life Um, I hope you enjoy the pickled okra. I'll let it set for at least eight weeks, but six months is premium. Oh, absolutely, hun. No worries. I'm taking your word for it. I'm going for it. Absolutely love it. Yeah, I love the name too. It's awesome. Okay, so I have a bed at the moment that is out the front. Okay, so I, and it is my, at the moment is predominantly garlic. All right, so I have lines of garlic in there. Um, Tani doesn't like garlic. He can't go near it. But to put, you, you want to, I don't want just one bed because I only have about 15 feet by 8 feet at the longest, maybe 8 to 10 feet at the widest part of the front garden um, to grow in. I want to make that bed work for me. All right, so that bed is going to have other things in it that are going to help. 
So because there's already alliums in it, it means that I can have spring onions, which are the long skinny ones. Um, otherwise known as, I think you guys in the States call them green onions or salad onions. Um, I will see if I can, I've got a packet of seeds in here that might help. Right. Okay. So these ones. Okay. They're, they're quite a long variety. <laughs> and I did buy them because they're, you know, grow a lightsaber because, you know, I'm a geek and it's got to happen, right? So those I'm going to have a line at the bottom of the bed because they're nice and safe to have with the garlic, okay? And they're also going to block anything coming up that end of the bed, all right? The other thing I'm going to be able to put in there are things like... Um, I know, they're so cute. Suttons. If you're in the UK, Suttons. Sutton seeds have them. Mm. So one thing that goes really, really well with alliums is brassicas. So in that bed, I'm going to be putting Romanesco. I'm going to be putting ca uh, cauliflower and I'm going to be putting um, broccoli because Tanny really likes broccoli. He also likes the Romanesco, actually, which is really cool. He doesn't like cauliflower, but that's okay. I do, and I'm quite happy to sit there and eat it all day long. So we're going to have those in there, which takes care of, you know, a lot of higher things. One of the other things that we're going to pop in there is some are some root vegetables, okay? Now, because it's an allium bed, it is the perfect place to put carrots, okay? Because the carrots... The alliums actually help the carrots by confusing things like carrot fly from the smell of the actual carrot leaves and things. So we don't want carrot fly in there. So we're gonna we're gonna intersperse them in amongst the garlic and the spring onions. Um, and then down the other end, I'm going to have some sage plants. Now the reason for the sage plants is the same as the alliums it confuses things like carrot fly it confuses things um like other bugs and stuff that like to go at the brassicas so we're going to have a nice line of sage plants that are going to stay there it's going to be a little sage bed and it's going to be awesome right now on the back of the bed which is the fence line piece i'm going to plant dill now, the reason I'm going to put dill on the back is because it's quite a high one. And um, for me, trying to pick it, I want to have that at the back of the bed because it's higher um, than, say, a line of beetroot at the other long line of the bed, which would be much easier for me to pick at the front because it's a lot smaller. Yeah. So I'm going to put that interspersed in between it all because all of that protection and all of that is going to be really, really good for celery. Okay, so now we have a bed that is probably two metres long by about, okay, so two metres, that's around about six to seven feet, about seven foot long, and it's about two foot wide, the bed. So we're going to be able to place all those and then I'm going to be able to put the celery in between as well, which is going to be completely protected and help to hold up by the brassicas. The brassicas will help to hold it up. Now, if you've also noticed in... Hi, LP. How you doing, darling? Um, ooh, ooh. Hang on a second. This is... Hello, darling. How are you doing? I am well. How are you? I'm doing really awesome. We have Danny from Wicked Awesome Garden. <laughs> Here, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Can I do that? Will it flip me? It flipped yeah, me. Yay. It you. Yay. Yay. I haven't been on a live or a live on my channel in forever. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Well, we're doing all about companion planting today. So, cool. you know, what sort of companion planting is important for you? And why Why would you do what you do in the bed that you do it in? 
<laughs> Sorry, had a little friend in the in the back seat there. Okay. Nuggies. Um, <laughs> there we go. Hey, Diva in the dirt. And got Maureen saying, "How's the new homestead? It's wonderful." <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So, um, companion planting mostly for me. It's veggies. Yeah. Um, and since one of the things I like to grow most are, um, my nightshades like peppers and tomatoes, mm -hmm. um, I want to kind of, you know, things that get infested with aphids really easily. Um, yeah. I like to surround all my tomatoes, especially with marigolds, basil, and nasturtium. Yeah. Um, the nasturtium is a good trap crop. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, so the aphids go there, but then the the basil and marigold kind of keep them off the off the tomatoes. And they also bring in ladybirds, which love to eat the aphids, which is bonus. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Woohoo! Yeah. So that's the uh, that's the 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 that's the most part of my companion planting. Um, Let's see. I don't put beans near brassicas. No. <laughs> um, yeah. Onions and carrots go well under tomatoes, too. If they you prune do. the bottom. We, we like actually should. just talked about that. But if you put them with any other companion plants that tomatoes like, the carrots don't like them. But, and then if you put any companion plants that the carrots like, the tomatoes don't like them. So it, it's kind of one of those things that, yeah, it's a good one, but only if it's sort of like in containers, you know? Yeah. That, that's, that's my feeling anyway, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Tomatoes and bacon worked. <laughs> <laughs> Sika is in the house. Uh oh. Oh, it's all gonna go downhill. Look out. <laughs> it's just I can't wait. Companion. I I'm um I'm, I'm gonna talk to your missus later and make sure it wasn't her. Um <laughs> well, I can't wait for that first big slicing tomato so I can make it into oh. a delicious BLT. Mm. I know, with a, right? With a slice of cheddar cheese, like yeah. sharp cheddar cheese. Yeah, I like a really mature one that's almost crumbling. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we call I that a Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we have we have a mutual interest in a person that just has a tomato sandwich as her first tomato that comes out. And to be honest, I, it's something that I've picked up on as well because it's honestly, it is, you can't beat just that. It's simple and the first one of the season and you've just got to do it mm. because it just works. And it, it's just, yep. yeah. <laughs> mm. I mean, like for me at the moment, tomato is going to be a priority because I haven't had any like proper tomatoes that I've been able to grow properly for the last two years because two years ago we lost everything to blight and of course obviously oh. last year we were moving so we couldn't get any in in time so this oh, year yeah. all out tomatoes i <laughs> 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 counted my seeds now and i have something like um 47 varieties of tomatoes I got you beat. I have 71. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I send you. Yeah. It, it, well, it's like Pokemon cards. It, it's yeah. like Pokemon. You've got to catch them all. You've got to um, catch them all. Absolutely. You yeah. know, I'm not sure if I'm going to have the room to grow them all, but I'm going to give it a go. Oh, no. She's gone. Oh, dear. She's disappeared. Okay. <laughs> Bless her. Well, maybe she'll be back and maybe she won't, but she is working at the moment. So, you know, we, we just have to deal with what we can get. Okay. But that first tomato is definitely something that you just have to make its own. Yeah. 
We all have priorities and favorite vegetables. Due to limited space, I plant the most expensive grocery items first and foremost. I grow dozens of tomatoes, peppers, beans, and okra first. Exactly that. Exactly that. So, you know, that that's really important. Tomato, American cheese, and mayo sandwich is first and foremost. <laughs> Yeah, I'll let her know that one. Seeker. Yeah, she does. She sounds like Denise will only eat cheese that bikes back. Um, Diva in the Dirt says, I'm trying to grow okra. My plants grew maybe two feet and I've got three okra pods. I'm going to try again this year. Any tips? Possibly it just needs a bit. Your um, soil may need a bit of amending. Um, yeah. Oh, Blue, I got a tomato picture for you. I don't play when it comes to my tomatoes. Fair enough. I'm happy to have pictures. I'm cutting back on my varieties and playing more of the tried and true for me. Yes, awesome. Hi, Janet's the homestead where you are. Hello, my darling. Welcome in. Okay, so we've lost Danny, but that's okay. We're cool. We can keep going. So back to that bed. So out of a two meter or seven foot by two foot bed, I'm going to be able to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight crops. No, that's an orca, you daft monkey. What are you doing? Orca, that's a killer whale. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, we've got nine crops that we can have in there. That's all right, darling. It's all good. It's fine. I totally get it. I do get it. I really do. Um. I wish my phone had that issue right now, but at the moment we've got more snow warnings for the next week, so we've got to... <laughs> I don't think it's going to be a problem for a while. Um, but the other thing, the other thing with this bed is this. Now, many of us have major issues with cabbage white butterflies. Now, they are beautiful butterflies. They really, really are. Okay? But... They are a menace and they will put their little babies on your brassicas and they will be decimated overnight, right? So what I do, and I will be showing this in my video um, at the end of the month, which is part of the small gardening collaborate, small space gardening collaboration, um, that um i put hoops i make a hoop house over my bed and it is created using poles and old plumbing blue plumbing pipe and then i use um scaffolding debris netting um over that and completely net the entire bed so for me i wanted to have a lot of things in that bed that didn't need pollinators per se OK, so I very, very carefully picked what was going in that bed so that the whole thing could be netted to prevent that particular and other bugs that we don't want going in there from going in there. So once that is netted, the rain will still be able to rain on it. I can still water it. I don't need to go in it so often. Um, it will take care of itself because it's interplanted quite densely we will probably have very few weeds issues that we need to worry about. Um, and I'll be able to just lift the net when I need to, to pull things out, which will be perfect. Okay. So that's, that was a really important thing for that bed, that particular bed. Now let's have a look at chat. Um, the, Okra likes it hot and dry. Do not overwater. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thank you for letting us know that. Um, I'm doing the same and focusing on specific varieties and thanks for the okra tip. No problem. Awesome. Thank you, Suburban Hill, Billy. That's awesome. Um, Danny just said, I was going to tell you I should send you some of the tomato seeds I have that were stolen from the Vatican Gardens. Yes. Yes, you really should. <sighs> oh, it's only four degrees Celsius here right now. Just the sun was on the phone plus live streaming and it was too much for the, my poor pixel to take. Oh, bless. 
<laughs> it's all good, darling. I totally get it. Totally get it. So there are some, there are many different types of companion planting that you can do, and you can pick your own plants that you want to go in with what you want to do. But there are also some very famous companion growing methods, and they all stem from the Three Sisters Garden. Okay. Now, for those of you who haven't heard of the Three Sisters Garden, it is based on three crops. Um, it is Native um, American style. It, it's, it is a Native American way of growing, but it will work in the UK. It will work in Australia. It will work wherever you want to do it, okay? So it's awesome. Um, LP, I have to go in a few, but we'll replay. Th great topic. Have a lovely weekend, everyone. Oh, darling, thank you so much for being here. It was lovely to have you. Okay, so Three Sisters Garden. Um, there is a bit of law that goes with it, but um, we're not going to go into that right now. Um, but there are three sisters. And the first one is the corn. Now, it's usually done on a mound, all right, or but you can do it in a raised bed. And in the middle of the bed is where you put your corn, okay? So you start off with your corn in the middle of the bed. You can, If you have a circular bed, you can actually make it into a ring, but you want to have the corn as close to, as possible around it. Um, and then under that, you have pole beans or climbing beans, okay? Because the beans will grow with the corn and grow up the corn so you don't need to have trellises and all of that kind of thing because they'll just grow straight up the corn with no problem now another really cool thing about that is that the bean the corn is sucks nitrogen out of the soil it loves its nitrogen but what beans does that beans do is they actually replace the nitrogen in the soil so you don't have to feed it as often either which makes it really, really cool. Now, the next one, the third sister that they put in is pumpkins or vine squash, okay? Not your bush variety or dwarf ones, but your vine squash. And that is to basically mulch the bed and to um, cover it so much that the weeds can't get through. And it also helps to stop the moisture from being sucked out of the or drying out on the hot summer days and stuff like that. Um, but there are other methods as well that have been adapted from that. Now, there's a four sisters one, which Danny has just um, touched on. And the fourth is sunflowers. Now, you don't have to have sunflowers. You can put amaranth instead or you can have a mix of the two if you want it okay amaranth being a grain whereas the sunflowers are being seed and it's it's really cool but i might we'll just see how we go um i have to grow them this year because i only have a handful of seeds but i plan to save a bunch and share around awesome yep awesome janet says three sisters works great for me when i tried it a couple of years ago that's fantastic um I like, Danny says, I like to use sunflowers, trail of tears, beans, and zucchini around the base. Whatever works, whatever works for you. Hi, Scott. Scott from Cottage, Cuckoo Cottage is in the house. This is great stuff. Thank you. No, you're welcome, darling. Um, I got some red amaranth this year to grow for my chickens. Awesome. So amaranth is over here in the UK is known as Love Lies Bleeding. Um, because of the the very pretty red flowers or where the drop. So that's why it's called that. So most people actually call it by its variety name, which is Love Lies Bleeding rather than Amaranth. But it is a very old, very good grain to have um, that you can actually grind if you wanted to like wheat and use it that way, or you can use it just as it is in a kind of like a couscous kind of quinoa alternative to rice kind of thing. Um, hey, JT. Um, 
Will soybeans work or so different kinds of beans? Yes, they will, darling. They will absolutely work. Um, I'm going to be using... I'm going to be using some Kentucky Wonder Wax beans that a very lovely lady sent me. I'm going to be using those. But I'm also going to be using... Um, oh, no, they're dwarf ones. I don't have many climbing beans actually um no nope, that's another dwarf oh, good grief i have got others um they're all dwarfs okay so they're going in with my cucumbers anywho okay hi jamie how are you darling welcome in so Oh, gosh, now I've got mud everywhere. Look out. <laughs> it's everywhere, isn't it great? Okay, so then the four sisters with the sun, with the corn, the beans, the pumpkins, and the sunflowers or amaranth. Then you've got five sisters. There is a five sisters bed, which you can do corns, corn, beans, pumpkin, sunflower, or amaranth, and then you can do taro or Jerusalem artichokes. Now, that is very interesting to me, I have to admit. I got very excited about that when I heard about that one because I thought, oh, I wanted to grow Jerusalem artichokes this year. I wasn't really sure um, whether to put them in a bed or not and because, you know, once you've got them, you can't get rid of them because, you know, if you leave one, you've got them forever, that kind of thing. But then I thought about it and I thought, you know what, I'm not that bothered. If I've got volunteers in there for next year, I'm good. I'm good with that. That's not a problem at all to me. Um, and then we jump. There isn't a six, but there is a seven. Now, the seven is also a traditional method that is used by the Abenaki um, indigenous agriculture. Okay, so um, we start with corn, um, beans, squash or pumpkins, sunflowers or your amaranth if that's what you want to use um jerusalem artichokes or taro if you want to grow taro and then the next two sisters the next two are what you guys call in the states you call them ground cherries we call them cape gooseberries here in the uk or physalis physalis yeah and the last one, number seven, is tobacco. Now, the reason the tobacco is in there is actually as pest control. Okay, so, you know, you don't have to have it as a, you know, if you don't smoke, don't, don't, you know, don't worry about it because it's actually a really good pest control. And it's one that you can use afterwards to make a tea from that if you do have issues with pests later on, with other plants, like in the next year, you can use it as a spray to get rid of those, especially things like black fly. It really does get rid of them quite effectively. They don't like it. But as they're growing, because they're getting hit by the other plants and they're giving off their, you know, smell, juice, whatever you want to call it, gas, <laughs> It actually puts a lot of the pests off. It doesn't put off bees, which is great because we want as many bees in there as possible, right? So you've got this really awesome bed. So even if you've only got like an eight foot by eight foot space or you've only got like a two, two foot by two meter space, you can actually still do this. You've just got to be careful about your placement of your plants. Okay, so it is possible to do it. You just need to be a little bit careful, okay? So, yeah, but it's 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 an awesome way to do it all. And it's something that I'm going to try this year. I'm going to be growing a seven sisters bed, okay, at the front of my house. <laughs> so that's going to be quite exciting. I am very excited about that. So... The other thing we need to look at, um, I'm going to look at, I'm going to very quickly walk you through what I'm doing in my greenhouse. Now, our greenhouse is 10 foot by 6 foot. At the end, the last two feet at the end are going to be used for racking. 
Um, Tani wanted to put another bed in there so that we had a U-shaped bed. But I said to him, where are we going to put the racking? <laughs> but if he wants to um, sort out the shed, that, that'll be a different thing altogether. But we'll, we'll just see. We'll see how it goes and see what happens. But the, sh the greenhouse is pretty much almost up now. So quite pleased about that. So what I'm going to have is going to have one bed where the main crop is tomatoes and the next bed over its, its parallel bed will be cucumbers okay so the cucumbers are where i'm going to be growing my things like leeks carrots bush beans and mar and marigolds and radishes because apparently radishes grow really really well with bush beans they also do really really well with um things like courgettes or zucchini or whatever you want to call them like the little dwarf bush varieties of squash so having a couple of radishes in there apparently on the same little space and letting them grow to seed is really quite useful to the plant because it stops um, things like vine weevils and stuff like that from going in and, and eating them out, which is great. And the other thing is because the ones that you radishes you plant with the squash, are, it's suggested that you let them grow to seed. Now, I love growing radishes to seed the seed pods are edible when they're green they've got to be fresh they've got to be green okay so you want to grow them so they're only a little like that but you get hundreds of one radish of one radish plant you get hundreds of these things okay and they're great absolutely awesome pickled okay they they are like spicy peanuts that's what they taste like I like to snack on radish pods. Absolutely. I love radish seed pods. Yes. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to be interspersing a lot of radishes. I like eating radishes as radishes, but they're not that expensive to buy either. So it's not a crop that I'm worrying about whether I'm going to get them fresh out of the ground for eating as a radish um, because they are still very, very cheap to purchase. But I can't buy radish pods, so I'm quite happy um, for them to go to seed. I, I'm more than happy for them to go to seed. I love roasted radishes. Yeah, me too. I tell people they're like spicy green beans. Yeah, they kind of are. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Um, yeah, very much. I mean, like, I, I say spicy peanuts, but that's because my radish pods were really tiny. So, <laughs> okay. So, you know, I'm going to be having a few of those different things being able to be put in there because the cucumber bed needs to be less acidic than the tomato bed. Okay. So it doesn't have to be very alkaline, but having a little bit in there does help the plants. Um and they do do well with beans because they do add some nitrogen to the soil but it doesn't make it acidic if that makes sense um but i can also put leeks in there i can put my carrots in there i can put my marigolds in there you know and and they're going to be just as cool you know and then in the tomatoes i'm going to put my chilies and peppers i'm also going to make it my asparagus bed okay because the ferns from the asparagus will actually help to protect some of the tomatoes and things like that and to stop other bugs from coming in. Um, I'm also going to grow some basil in there and I'm also going to grow some nasturtium in there. All right, so they're going to be really good for bringing in the ladybugs and such. Um, where we used to live, we had a ladybird nest that used to hibernate in our front porch every single winter. But and you know they'd come in at about October, September, October, and they'd go up into the top corner, and then they'd all nest together. I'd never seen it before. I'd never seen it before until then. Now the other two things that are going into the greenhouse are my grapevines that my sister bought me for Christmas. Well, she sent me the money, and I bought the I bought the grapevines, right? So I've got a cabernet, and I have a chardonnay. So I have a red one, and I have a um, oh, sorry, I have a black 
well, yeah, red wine grape and I have white wine grape. I'm not worried about having a lot of fruit off them. What I want them for is the leaves because I like making my own dolmades. I love creating, you know, and so I want them for the leaves predominantly so that I can pick all my own leaves, I can process my own leaves and have my own vine leaves because they're getting very, very expensive now. So, but there is a plant that can be a companion plant to grapes. Now, I didn't know about this until I read up on it and I was like, oh, I'm really excited actually because that means now that these big tubs that the grapes are going to be in will be able to have a companion plant that will actually do them some good. Now, there is a herb called hyssop that is used in herbal medicine. It's used in teas. It's used in all sorts of things. And apparently, if you grow hyssop with grapes, um, it will boost production of the actual grapes themselves, which is awesome, really awesome. So, you know, I mean, it, to me, if I get the grapes, that's awesome because it, it's it's a second harvest that I can have from the grapes. But the grape, the for me predominantly, my main crop from that will be the leaves rather than the grapes themselves. So, you know, but it would be nice to have fresh grapes that we've grown. I um, can't wait for that to happen. Um, at the moment, I mean, when I bought them, they came, they were that big. Okay, and what's happened is that every single day that we've had them and they started to sprout, um, they've grown an inch, an inch a day. So at the moment, um, I have one of my grapevines is nearly three foot long. <laughs> And it really desperately needs to be repotted. And the other one, it did, it, it's kind of, it stopped there for a while. It looked a little bit sick. So I'm going to have to repot that one as well. So let's get them going. But I didn't want to put them into their forever pots just yet because then they would have to go out into the greenhouse. And because they're only babies, I want to protect them for that little bit longer indoors. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. Oh, JT, boy, delectable stream. Be sure to smoosh the like button if you haven't already. <laughs> yes. Hit the thumbs up, people. Um, so, yeah, that's that's pretty much what's going on in the greenhouse. Everything else is going to be in containers around the courtyard, possibly out the front. Um, one of the other things that I need to do for out the front is I have some willow withies that I need to make into an archway. And up that archway, I'm going to grow peas. So, yeah, that, that's what's going to be happening there. I've got some all sorts of different colored Mange 2 peas, you know, the nice little flat ones, um, which I absolutely adore. And they're so expensive, it's ridiculous. Um, but I want to grow those all up my, all up my archway. So that would be great fun. Um, yeah, so... And it'll be nice because we'll have a nice little green archway to go underneath um, to go into the front garden area, which will be great. So, yeah, that that's pretty much your basics on companion planting. It is important. Um, you know, um, walnut trees... Uh, we, we were going to talk about allopathy. Now, allopathy refers to a negative and positive effect on one type of plant by a chemical produced by another type of plant. Okay, various types of chemicals, including phenolics, hydroxamic acids, and short chain fatty acids, have been identified as having allopathic properties. Which is why. They suggest not to grow any plants near walnuts as they won't thrive. Okay. Um, however, there are some people that say that, you know, it, it doesn't really work that way. Um, but, you know, 
Um, so it, it just depends on what your experience is as well. Sorry, Blue, seems I may have deleted the tomato pics I wanted to send. It's all right, darling. It's okay. It's all good. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it's looking at what you can put together. Now, some of the best ones that you can put together are things like mint and brassicas. Um, mint will confuse flea beetle, um, which is, you know, it's not something that we want in our brassicas, thank you very much. Okay. I do have enough things in my brassica bed, though, that will deter flea beetle. And with it being netted, it make it far too difficult for it to get in there anyway. So I'm not too worried. Um, marigolds and tomatoes, they're, they're pretty much a given. Um, they just... The marigolds deter white flight. If you're work, if you're working in a greenhouse environment, though, um, and it's a fairly small one, no matter where you put the great the marigolds in there, it's going to be helpful. So, I've chosen to put the marigolds in with my cucumber bed, so that you know that will still work for the tomatoes. Um, because the nasturtiums are going to be down on the tomatoes as well, which also helps to keep away the aphids, which are more of an issue than whitefly. Um, carrots and leeks, because obviously if you've got carrots that um, you want to deter the, the carrot fly, and the best way to do that is to have stinky plants around them, and that's why they do well with alliums. So your onions, your leeks, and garlic and stuff like that. Also, lavender grows really well with carrots and leeks. Um, and at the bottom of my um, at the bottom of my seven sisters bed is where I'm actually going to be growing my lavender. So you know that's going to be really, really good. Um, I need to get some marigolds. Jamie says she needs to get some marigolds. Um, Tony says, marigolds help my tomatoes and tomatillos. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you and hubby just reminded me. <laughs> Bless you. I need to find a good deterrent to prevent leaf miners. Um, yeah, okay. I, I'm not sure leaf miners are something that we have an issue with over here. I've never seen them, so um, I can't really speak on that, but I'm sure we can find something. Pretty sure. Um, okay, so lavender is an awesome plant to have in your garden anyway because it attracts a range of pollinators including bees, butterflies and hoverflies. So planting it close to crops such as tomatoes, beans would increase numbers of pollinators to your patch. However, its strong scent is also deters insect pests. Plant with carrots and leeks for best results. Um, we have got a thing here on wormwood and bees, beans, bean, bees. Really? Mm, yeah. Um, a strongly her scented herb that can deter aphids such as black fly from broad beans and other bean crops. What's more, its yellow flower attracts hoverflies, leaf wings, and ladybirds, which prey on aphids. So that's always a good thing. Calendula and beans is always a good one as well. I'm going to be putting calendula out the front. Because I do have some other growing spaces that I haven't told you about out the front. <laughs> um, marigolds are very good for, um, so calendula, which is part of the marigold family, is also very good for luring aphids away. Um, also attracts beneficial insects, including ladybirds, lacewings, and hoverflies, um, because they all prey on um, aphids. Then you've got sage and brassicas. Um, because the so strong scent, they'll confuse pests of brassicas such as flea beetle if planted alongside them. What's more, it's blue flowers attract bees and hoverflies, which also pollinate crops. Then you've got things like um, I made a video last year on things to plant to attract in predator insects yes if you guys aren't following um danny over at wicked awesome gardening you really really should be you really really should be you know she's she she knows her stuff 
okay she does and she's awesome um borage and strawberries um borage is an attractive plant with hairy leaves that has a slight cucumber flavor if planted near strawberries Borage is said to improve their flavour. What's more, borage flowers are a magnet for pollinators such as bees, butterflies, hoverflies, which pollinate the crops. Now, this one is interesting. It's thyme and roses. What? You might just hit 4K today. Yeah, so if you guys don't know, Miss, Miss Danny over here has become an overnight TikTok sensation. <laughs> And all of a sudden, her YouTube's blowing up as well, which is great. That's awesome. That's really awesome, darling. So, yeah, thyme and roses, another strongly scented herb. Thyme is an excellent companion plant as it can confuse pests by masking the scent of the pest host plant. Okay? So it deters black fly, which is a, or aphids and stuff like that, which is a pain in the bum for roses. Um, yeah, so calendula and courgettes, uh, it's important for, you know, um, underplanting courgettes with calendula because, you know, especially where I live, where we get a lot of overcast weather, um, it still brings in the pollinators. So you're going to get more crop happening because they're going to find the squash flowers. So, you know, things like courgettes and stuff like that. So there we go. I mean, like that's that they're the that's the basics. I mean, like that's because that's what we're doing, right? We're doing the we're doing an introduction to companion planting. We're not doing a full on course on companion planting. <laughs> so yeah, um, and I think pretty much next week we will be looking at pests and pest control. Um, and that will be the end of the garden part of the introduction to homes, urban homesteading. Um, so we will be looking at pest control. So, Danny, hopefully I'll, I'll look into that for you um, this week. I've got to go and tend to the animals. If you're on when I get back, I'll pop back on. I'll catch the replay. Take care, Blue, and everyone in chat. Take it easy, Jamie. Thank you so much for being here. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Next week, pests. What are we going to do with them? Um, can you put borage directly into a container with strawberries? I have one of those strawberry pots with a couple of open spots. Yes. Yes, you can. Oh, Suburban Hillbillies found her pictures of tomatoes. I'm, I'm checking my email as we talk right now. Um, yep. Yeah. Are you? Um, ooh, ooh. Is it here? Is it here? Um, doop, 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 doop. Oh, yeah. Um, it hasn't turned up yet, darling, that I can see. So we may have to show it another time because we're coming to the end. But I will have a look and I will share them next week, okay, because I might use them to show what kind of pests we get from tomorrow, so <laughs> if that's okay with you. Um, yeah, so that that's that, – that's your lot on introduction to companion planting. It is important. It is, but you do need to do your own research as well because a lot of the plants, it depends on what grows in your area, what works well for you, what's going to work well with your planting methods and your plan of what you're going to do in your garden. Um, so be aware of that as well because some of these things, they may work, they may not work. Um, so, you know, just just be aware and yeah just take it easy 
okay so next week we're going to look at pests and pest control and stuff like that natural ways organic ways of doing that um we did touch on that today with the companion planting which will help but there are some pests that just don't want to listen okay so we want to look more deeply into that subject and what we can do as organic gardeners um to keep our garden as chemical free as possible okay so i will see you guys next week all right um and you guys have a really really awesome day if don't forget that this series is going to be transcribed into a downloadable pdf which will be available on etsy um as soon as we're done well within a couple of weeks of the series being done um those pages that are available now will be being popped out unit by unit in Patreon if you are a Patreon. You don't have to be a Patreon. I'm not forcing it. I'm not doing any of that, okay? So what I'm saying is that if you want to, that would be really awesome. And you get those. You get um, any other downloadables I'm designing. You get res printable recipe cards, all sorts of bits and pieces that are occurring on there and stuff that will be coming in the future as well. So, you know, it, it's all fun and games, and I will see you guys next week. So have a really, really awesome one. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been wonderful. Um, have an awesome time in your garden because we're getting to that point in the year where it's all about to start happening. I'm very, very excited. Okay, so I will see you guys then. Have a really, really awesome rest of your day. Love you guys heaps. Mwah!